After a few months of using the controller with the Hall Sensor joystick, I've decided the different feel isn't from anything mechanical. It must be in the signal from the Hall Sensor. From some comments about the Hall joysticks, it may be the output from this version is filtered. And that really could explain the smoother feel when using it. But just how much, if any filtering is being done, and if I can notice it, is it too much? So I want to test and compare the output of the Hall Sensor joystick to a regular potentiometer based one. So I've made a PC board to hold two joystick modules. Since the boards come three at a time, I've laid out a combination of Hall and regular joysticks to test with. And I've made a small frame to hold the joystick boards. I've equipped it with a cam to be able to move both joysticks smoothly at the same time. I also made a plastic bar to fit on the joystick shafts to be able to move both at the same time with my finger. Of course only in one axis of movement, but that should be all I need. And I will be using a bench power supply to apply 1.8 volts to the joystick modules for testing. Here is what I'm going to call my reference joystick board. It has two regular potentiometer based joysticks mounted to it. This I will call joystick 1. It is connected to channel 2 of the oscilloscope, the green colored trace can see that pushing the joystick toward the electrical connector moves the output voltage from about 0.9 volts at resting position to 0 volts at the mechanical limit. This will be called joystick 2 and it is connected to channel 3 of the scope, the purple trace. The output polarity is connected the same as joystick 1. Here is my cam at work. I'll get it up to speed and then record a waveform. And here's the signals from the joystick. I've upped the gain on the channels to 200 millivolts of division so as to see a bit better the difference in the joysticks. Joystick 2 has a slightly higher center offset voltage than joystick 1. Other than that they track almost perfectly. Each horizontal division on the display is equal to 20 milliseconds of time and there are approximately 5 divisions in each cycle of the joystick. So each revolution of the cam takes about 100 milliseconds, meaning the drill is running right at 600 RPMs. The plastic bar just pushes onto the joysticks. It can't be pushed down all the way as that would limit the movement of the joysticks. You can see here that by putting the bar on the joysticks it has caused a bit more voltage difference in the output. I don't see that causing me any problems with what I'm going to be using it for. By moving the bar back and forth I'm moving both joysticks at the same time. They may be skewed a bit but they should both be moving in sync and that's what I'm looking for. Here I'm back at 500 millivolts of division and from this waveform other than the fact I can't move the bar very smoothly is that both joysticks track very closely to one another as they should and as I would expect a Hall sensor joystick to do as well. I'll change out joystick boards. Now joystick 1 will be the Hall sensor joystick and that will be on scope channel 2 and the regular potentiometer joystick will be on channel 3 the purple trace. Here's the waveform from the cam at about 540 RPMs right around 110 milliseconds per cycle. I'm back at 200 millivolts of division here for the cam testing. Let me clear the cursor info so it can take a better look at the waveform. I have to say I was quite surprised when I saw this. The channel 3 waveform looks like it should, but the channel 2 waveform from the Hall sensor joystick is not even close to matching it. Let me put the bar on the joysticks. I may have wasted a bit of time even making the cam. I thought they would be so close to matching that I would need something very accurate to move the joysticks in sync. I'll try and move the bar as evenly as I can, see if I can get a good waveform to measure. So I'm back at 500 millivolts of vertical division here and 50 milliseconds of horizontal division instead of the 20 milliseconds. I'm much slower than the drill. Again the channel 3 regular joystick looks like I would expect it to. I think I even did a good job of moving it pretty evenly. The channel 2 Hall joystick is not even close to what I was expecting. Let me start here at the low to high movement. It took me about 55 milliseconds to move the joystick. I'll call it from down to up. This channel 2 section here is really what I would expect for the entire waveform. It looks like when the Hall sensor voltage is going up it follows the path it should. This area here is very interesting. I think this sharp transition here means the Hall sensor is not using an RC filter in its output amp. Now for this section here, I'll call it from the up position to the down position. I was a little faster here, took about 50 milliseconds to move the bar. First this part here, 
That may not be a delay in the output of the Hall sensor. The skewing of the bar I'm using and possible electrical over-travel of the Hall sensor may be the reason it starts going down over 10 milliseconds after the regular joystick. I'll examine that a bit closer a little later. The big problem I see is at the end of my 50 millisecond movement. can see the potentiometer joystick is all the way at the low extreme, but the Hall joystick hasn't even gotten to the dead zone area. Now it's going in the right direction, and how the controller, and game for that matter, process the joystick movement will have a huge effect on how this gets translated to in-game movement. But just looking at it, I don't like it. Let me see just how long it takes for the voltage to go from high to low. I'll try and hold the bar for an even amount at both extremes and see what I get. Sweep time is now set to 200 milliseconds of division. Of course, I was even slower moving the bar from one side to the other, but I was still well under 100 milliseconds. But look how long it took for the output of the Hall sensor to move from high to low. Over 300 milliseconds. So maybe looking at one-fifth to one-fourth of a second for the output to transition from 1.8 to 0 volts? At this point, let me put in the other board with the other Hall joystick on it. Just in case there is something wrong with this one. On this board, the Hall joystick is number 2 and will be on scope channel 3, the purple trace. I'm going to try and position it so I can better tell about the delay from movement to output change. As best I can, I want the joystick shafts to contact the cam along the same horizontal plane. I was expecting the delay to be the cause of the different feel of the joystick, so I do want to measure it since I'm here, but I'm now quite sure that is not the cause of the different feel the joystick has. I'm going to start with the slow toggle using the bar on the joysticks. Not a very even movement on my part, but it will do. The output of this Hall joystick looks just like the other one, so I think it's what it's supposed to be. Let me do some cursor measurements. So it took me about 72 milliseconds to move the joystick from up to down here. And it took over 340 milliseconds for the Hall joystick's output to drop to a low level. So it took over a quarter of a second for the Hall joystick's output to get to the level of the regular joystick. I think that's just too long. The low to high transition is fantastic. Really couldn't expect better than that. And here I must have bounced the joystick a bit, but I don't think this is a case of the Hall sensor filtering out the 35 milliseconds of movement. This is the Hall sensor reaching maximum output before it has hit the mechanical limit. I have noticed this at both extremes for the Hall joysticks. This is simply the joystick did not move enough to signal a lower output. Which is good because when mounted in the controller, the movement of the joysticks is limited even more. Now to try and get an accurate reading of the delay between movement and output change. I put a fresh battery in the drill and I'm going to run the cam in both directions and take measurements. I'm thinking that any difference in the delay will be due to mechanical misalignment of the shafts riding on the cam. Seems like it would be anyway. Here is the cam running counterclockwise and with a cycle time of about 47 milliseconds. So that's like moving the joystick back and forth over 20 times a second. I've got the cursor set to about the midpoint on the traces and I get a 3.1 millisecond delay. Here is the cam running in the clockwise direction. The cycle time is about 46 milliseconds, so just a tiny bit faster than the counterclockwise run. And the cursor measurement is about the same. 3.1 milliseconds, so I think I have the joysticks aligned quite well on the cam. Here's the peaks with the cursors, again so hard to tell with the asymmetric Hall sensor waveform, but it looks like the movement to output change delay is very small, really less than 4 milliseconds. There is some kind of filtering being used in these Hall sensors, that's for sure, but it's not what I was expecting but I am now sure that is what's causing the difference in feel between the regular joystick and the Hall sensor joystick. There is a lot of difference there. Looking at the waveforms, I'm surprised they work, really. But the controller I grabbed first is the one with the Hall sensor joystick in it. It does feel smoother playing. But I think the goal for a Hall sensor replacement joystick should be to reproduce the output of the potentiometer based joystick as close as possible and the asymmetric slope output that these Hall sensors have is quite strange. I just play a few games casually, so maybe that's why I kind of like the way these Hall sensor joysticks feel. A competitive gamer might have a problem with them. In the DualSense controller, it means moving up and left, 
have to be a slight bit slower in response than moving down and right, but I really haven't noticed it in playing. Now I will be looking for it, though. The feel is different because it is different, and that's the way it is. But on the upside, no more drifting problems. Thank you for watching.